symptoms of Guam's adjuratum yellow vein virus on tomato. Stunting, yellowing and intervenal chlorosis, and leaf curling. For decades, tomatoes have been ranked in the top 10 most popular crops on Guam despite the presence of many common viruses. Cucumber mosaic virus, tomato mosaic virus, tobacco mosaic virus, potato virus Y. The most popular variety is Season Red, a heat-tolerant, inexpensive cherry tomato. In the spring of 2011, Season Red, Guam's most common tomato variety, began exhibiting severe virus symptoms. After extensive work on the virus's genome sequence by research plant pathologist Dr. Kai Shu Ling and his associates of the USDA Agriculture Research Service, it was determined that Guam may have a novel tomato leaf curl virus. Upon further analysis in 2014, it was suggested the virus be designated as Ageratum yellow vein virus Guam, or AYVB Guam. Season red cherry tomato with severe symptoms on the left, with moderate symptoms in the center, and with no symptom on the right. Ageratum yellow vein virus is not new to the Asia Pacific region. With the arrival of Adriatum yellow vein virus on Guam, Season Red could no longer be relied on to produce a good crop. By 2013, AYVV was found in half of Guam's farming areas. Symptoms vary throughout the infected field, ranging from no symptom production to severe. To reduce the impact of AYVV on the industry, variety trials were established in order to identify new superior tomato varieties. Top 5 varieties identified in 2015 were Felicity from Hazara Company, Olivia, Carmine, Affinity, and Ornella, all from the Lafroy Valley Company. Though new disease resistant varieties have been identified, as shown on the left, if disease losses are moderate, farmers prefer Variety Season Red, as shown on the right, due to their low seed costs, market preference, and determinate growth habit. AYVV symptoms vary greatly. Depending on the variety, the field environment, the time of infection, field symptoms will vary from slight to severe. The symptoms shown below are those that have occurred in Guam. Dr. Schlub would like to point out that such symptoms may not be exclusive to AYVV in other locations, but may be caused by other viruses and environmental conditions as well. Early stage of disease. Yellowing, intervenal chlorosis, slight leaf puckering, advanced stage of disease. Plants are stunted or may stop growing. Leaves develop chlorotic margins which may extend between the veins. Leaves are smaller or thicker than normal and bent or curled. Flowers are not affected by the virus. Fruits are not affected by the virus. Associated with virus symptoms are whiteflies. Shika Tariyama's presentation at the IPM workshop for home gardeners on August 2016 at the University of Guam. The project was working on a virus problem that we have on Guam. So she's going to talk to you today about, uh, you know, some of the research that she's been involved with and kind of update you on what, what we currently know about it. Normal viruses, they are just another virus. Unfortunately, these viruses are transmitted only by insect vectors. For the most part, insects are relatively non-selective, right? You do have insects that, you know, prefer certain plants, but a lot of times insect vectors, you know, feed on whatever. They're opportunistic. They'll feed on whatever they can get on. AYVV is transmitted by one insect, the white flies. They rapidly propagate the virus, and because they're able to fly around, you know, they hop all over and they're able to transmit the virus if I had the virus and I'm a white fly, if I just fly around for a day and start feeding on all of, you know, all, you guys are assuming plants, you guys will probably all get the virus. All it takes is one single white fly that is infected to infect a plant. So, that's a white fly. 
It's not a you know normal house fly that's just albino or white. It's actually a really tiny fly. Um, it looks almost kind of like powder if you look like at it on the other side. Yeah. Sometimes you get these spiraling white rings under your leaves of your mm -hmm. ornamental crops. So that is the adult white fly. That's its common name. Scientifically, it's called Vimicia tabaki. So once the 24 hours has passed, then that white fly now has the ability to transmit the virus for up to 20 days after initially obtain, you know, obtaining the virus in its system. So that's a very long time. An adult white fly will only live for about, what, three weeks? Is it an adult life cycle? So this is a general life cycle of a white fly. So you have the adult, the eggs that kind of spiral around, and then these are the nymphs, the juveniles, before it becomes, in, or you know, metamorphosizes into, an, or changes into an adult. Um, so from here all the way until they become an adult is the point where they can begin obtaining the virus. So anywhere from the eggs hatching is very critical. Adult female in her three weeks life site or lifetime, they she can lay up to 100 eggs. eggs. One white fly. These are plants that you guys took out from a field. The grower had contacted us and says, he, you know, in his field he has plants. Some are really short, doing nothing. Others are they're just poor, but they have small fruits. And other plants are just fine. Yeah. So his field was peppered with these different size plants. The thing about viruses is once a plant gets infected with the virus, the plant never, uh, the virus stays with the plant forever. So what we did is we, we found three plants, we brought some plants back, and we put them in pots. Two weeks later, we basically got the same symptoms that he had in his field. He had plants that in two weeks, it only got that tall. It, in fact, it didn't grow at all. This only, you know, was stunted and this was the only uh, plant that was normal. This is how devastating this virus can be. Uh, this virus got into, when it gets into production, it can actually wipe out an industry. These are from the same seedling tray. You can have a plant that's extremely healthy and then one that is severely impacted that is never going to bear fruit. So these are symptoms. So you have leaf yellowing, leaf vein yellowing, leaf curling or stunting. So you can see this is, you know, it's a relative normal, relative normal sized leaf. And then there, you, the new leaves are dramatically smaller. And then curling or puffing. We have a novel strain of AYVV on Guam. In 2013, we had some students go out and do an island-wide survey just to kind of get an idea of what the distribution of the virus is on the island. And at that time, it was only concentrated in the northern parts of Guam. For what reason, I don't know. I can only speculate, you know, air traffic or whatever. But it was only concentrated on farms in the north. And the furthest uh, farm south was in Barragat. Um, just this year, last year, uh, doing a separate uh, tomato survey, we found the virus symptoms in Iran. We've seen some fields that, you know, um, they've had the virus before, you know, really bad. And then next growing season, nothing. It's, so it's just a matter of, it's sadly, it's by chance, you know, whether or not your field gets it or not. But I'm not going to lie, when season red has no virus symptoms, this plant is remarkable. The amount of fruit that you can get out of that thing is just, you know, a lot. Though disease-resistant varieties have been identified, such as Carmine, Felicity, Martini, and others, farmers have been slow to adopt due to the cost of the seeds, market preference for the season red, and farmer's preference for determinate varieties. Tomato varieties Carmine on the left, Felicity Center, and Martini right from the Lafroy Valley Vegetable Seed Company remain asymptomatic on Guam through the growing season.